Welcome to New York Gut Game. We are back with another edition of New York Got Game. I hope you enjoyed the first week of NBA preseason basketball action and the WNBA Finals going on as well, too. And look, as a fan of basketball in this city, I've loved seeing what various content creators have done to spread the passion of New York basketball and create content that various fan bases can enjoy. One Knicks content creator, he's doing something a little bit different right now, and it caught my eye. So we're going to talk with him today about what he is doing and the upcoming season for the Knickerbockers. So let's tip this thing off and get right to it. Okay, joining me in studio for the first time is a guy who's a fellow Brooklynite, repping Flatbush to the fullest. He is the founder and host of the Nick of Time show, my guy, Jay Ellis. Jay, what's up, man? What's How going on, Zach? Oh, I'm good, man. Glad to, glad to have you here on the show. How's it been? It's been good, man. It's been good? It's been real good. It's yeah. Been- well, you know, look, I, I've always loved what you do and what you guys have done with Nick of Time Show, and I always wanted other content creators to come up here, so salute to you for what you've been doing. And look, I know you've been doing this for a long time, right? Yeah. And what you do in terms of the content creation. Can you tell the people about the origins of the Nick of Time Show and what's it been like for you doing it and connecting with the Knicks fan base? Man, we've been doing this since 2016. Veteran now. Yeah, veteran. Veteran in the game. This is when Derrick Rose was here. This is when Phil Jackson was here. This is when Kino was doing pull-ups on Phil Jackson's arms. <laughs> and, like, it was that era. And it all really started because, you know, I was, of course, big Knicks fan. And I was into podcasts. I was actually listening to Anthony MSG's show back in 2016. And all of a sudden, he just he went ghost. And I was looking for another podcast to listen to, and I couldn't really find one that I liked. And I figured, you know what, I I start one and make one myself. And also, you know what, there wasn't any podcast that had any melanated people in it as well. Mm. So, you know, I have my boy in Brooklyn, who who, who is a rapper, a musician. He has a studio in in the garage. So I hit him up, and he's a Knicks fan as well. I was like, hey, man. Why don't we start out this podcast? He's like, I'm down. Uh, call up my girl Kathy, who born on Ryan, and then KOT was born. At that time, it was the Nick of Time podcast. Now we're the Nick of Time show. Yeah. And we're going strong. And now we added Lee and Ryan, and we're off to the races. Yeah, shout out to Lee and Ryan on the show, always on there. I've been on your show a couple of times. It's mm-hmm. always a fantastic show to be on. So I love hearing about the origins and starting. And sometimes it's always great when you see a need for something, yeah. Jay Ellis, and you just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go and do that myself. And you see how the community, and you've seen that with Knicks fans, how they love it back. So that's always beautiful to see. But with you guys doing that, now you're not just doing the show. Yeah. You guys have also been doing something a little bit different, and I really yeah. like this. I'm excited to talk to you about it. You have a new Knicks trivia game show. It's called Nick Tactel. Good yeah. name there. I like that. And Appreciate I'll, it. I want to shout out uh, Jasmine and Jennifer of Nick's Omni Fan, who they do great work. Salute to them. They're hosting the show. They're doing an amazing job. Mm-hmm. And I've got so many questions about this trivia show. But <laughs> one, I guess, is what was your motivation to start it? How do you find the contestants for the show? Because they're all fans. I've seen that. Mm-hmm. And then what's the feedback been like thus far for the show? Well, I always kind of wanted to do something different. There's a lot of Nick's content out there, so I wanted to vary the content. So I'm always kind of looking out for ideas and ways to collaborate with different people. And this one kind of stuck. I saw them, I saw the girls and Nick's Omni fan back in the day. They were putting on uh, Nick's, they were they were putting together Nick's, uh, Nick's events. Yeah, they used to do events. Yeah, right. they, they did Nick's events and they had trivia at yeah. these events. So I thought to myself, self, wouldn't it be cool If we had a game show, I am an artist. I do graphic design. I do motion graphics. I can make things look nice. They can provide the questions. We can come together, team up, and we can create a game show and take the Nick content world by storm. And so far, the the feedback has been pretty good. People love playing it. When they play it, they want to play it again. And I'm thinking that it's going to pick up momentum once people get more aware of it. And, yeah, we, we really just kind of... Taking advantage of our community, too, because we've right. built a community over the years. We reach out to people. We tell them to email us at the Nick of Time podcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at the DKOT show. And that's how to get on the show. And that's how we're going to continue to build this 
this game in tic-tac-toe. Yeah, so for people wondering, it's literally just like tic-tac-toe, but they answer questions about Nick's trivia and the person gets to put their placement. Mm -hmm. You have the whole strategy of tic-tac-toe, trying to block each other out right. and get three in a row, and that's how you win. So I've liked it, man. It seems like Knicks fans are very, you know, Knicks fans are very passionate about the Knicks. Mm -hmm. And then also seeing them passionate about this game shows good. It's good new content for the Knicks fans. So I like that there too. The Knicks are heating up. All right, Jay Ellis, here's what we got to do. We got to talk some Knicks basketball. That's also part of the reason we're <laughs> here. I got to ask you about the offseason. Okay. What were the vibes for you like this offseason? Because not that many changes to the roster. Some small no. changes, right? Um, Obi Toppin gone, Dante DiVincenzo in, that's it. Did you like what the front office did this summer? Mm, like, if I had to grade it, yeah. Dex, I would, I would give you the C only because... The Obi Toppin thing bothered me, man. This is guy is a top 10 talent, and we ended up trading him for two low-level second-round picks and, like, a quarter water, and it did not sit well with my soul. I did not like it. <laughs> and also, like, as a Knicks fan, I'm looking to add some length, and I thought we are going to go after, you know, a, a guy who was 6'7", who can be a defensive guy and shoot threes. Uh, actually, I wanted to go after Torian Prince, who went to the Lakers for cheap. Um, and we didn't really address that situation as well. Um, but we did get Dante DiVincenzo, who I actually like. He's, he's not what I wanted or expected, but I actually like his fit with the Knicks. Um, and I think the continuity is going to help us kind of stay afloat. So all in all, I think we're going to be fine. We're going to be in the playoffs. But as far as an offseason, we didn't get a big star. We didn't address the biggest needs, I thought. So I give it. A C? C. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. A, it's not an A. It's not, not out the a. park. I didn't hit it it's not park. failing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like seventy five. Yeah, you know, <laughs> seventy five. Yeah. You know, you know, C wasn't acceptable for your parents in school. That no, was not acceptable I mean... at all. <laughs> you know, that was not an acceptable grade. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But let me ask you this. I, I'm going to follow up on that real quick because it, you made me think about something that a uh, friend of the show, my man Greg Underwood, has said. He has been very concerned about the lack of size on the bench and replacing Obi Toppin. Yeah. Do you think that's something that is going to be an issue this season? Do you, or is that something, or do you feel like they need to address that backup four position? Is that something you think must be done? I go back and forth with this because Josh Hart, right? Uh, he's a rebounder, and he that's what he does. And Obi, he never really was a rebounder, so I, in my mind, I don't think we're really going to lose much when it comes to the rebounding edge that we have. I still think we're gonna be elite because of Mitchell Robinson and the rest of those guys. So that doesn't really bother me as much. What does bother me though is defending longer guys. I felt like we had problems guarding teams like Toronto or teams like the Magic because we just couldn't match up with their length. And that's where I feel like we're gonna have problems. When we have longer guys shooting over the top and we're not able to defend at a, at a high, you know, high level because of it. All right, so you mentioned that there, because that kind of brings me to my next question here, Jay Ellis, because you've brought up the length, and maybe that is the answer to this question, but beside length, let's take it from there. What are your biggest concerns or question marks for this Knicks team heading into this season? You kind of mentioned one. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have anything else that's a big concern for you right now? Um, length, for sure. Um, also, I would say I don't have that many concerns, but... I would say shooting. Shooting in general, to me, is what gets us from being kind of regular to elite. We were a top eight offense last season, and while we were a top eight offense, it was more due to you know offensive rebounding and getting to the line. When you're looking at our shooting numbers, we were in the bottom half of the league when it comes to three-point shooting and field goals in general. So for me, for, uh, we have to take that leap and get better at shooting. So to me, that's still a concern. Now, Dante, he addresses that for sure. Um, but, you know, once he starts to get into that starting lineup, will the height difference, you know, kind of outweigh that? So we gain in the shooting if he if he if he's in the starting lineup. But then if we have him in the lineup with Jalen Brunson and IQ and Dante, that three guard small lineup might hurt us when it comes to defending, you know, longer guys or rebounding or things of that nature. So we will win on one area, but we'll lose another. So I'm really waiting to see how that shakes out. 
Yeah, good points about the Knicks offense there, right, and how good they were in terms of offensive rating. You know, but a lot of it was due to offensive rebounding, which they rated, were very high in that. And also, you said getting to the line. So if they can improve the shooting and do those other two things that he did so well mm -hmm. in the previous season, you might actually see the offense take a jump. It'll be interesting Absolutely. to see that, too. I got to ask you about this, because this is the question that I feel everybody, when you talk about the Knicks, or I'm asking, whether it's other reporters, other content creators, I'm always asking them, okay, if you got to choose one Knicks player, right, that you're going to watch closely this season, just to see how they do on the court, right? You want to see what this guy does on the court. Who's that player that you've got your eye on this season? Man, you know, I went back and forth with this. I went back and forth. Um, but I landed on R.J. Barrett. I landed on R.J. Barrett because of what I saw from him last season and what I saw from him in the playoffs and in FIBA. Last season, I felt like... You know, the Knicks, like I said, we were bottom tier in three-point shooting and field goal percentage. And when you look at that starting lineup, who was the guy who was below average in both of those areas? R.J. Barrett. So to me, when, I look, when I'm looking at where we can make the biggest jump and how it can affect the team, if I feel like R.J. Barrett can raise his ceiling in both of those areas, we'll be fine. And he didn't, he didn't start out well during the season, but when it came to the playoffs, we saw something. He took a leap. And then when we went to FIBA, he shot 40, he shot 45% from the field in FIBA and 37% from three. So if we could bring those numbers to the regular season and to the playoffs, and we combine that with Julius Randle being all NBA and and <laughs> and Brunson doing his thing, being all NBA, dropping what, 24 to 27 a game, Knicks are golden, man. Knicks uh, are golden. Okay. You <laughs> said the Knicks are golden, which brings me to my last question. This is the money. The last question was a setup to the money question. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations slash prediction for the Knicks in the 2023-2024 season? How do you think this Knicks team is going to do? I feel like the continuity is going to help us out, and we'll be around the same place we were last year. I think we're going to be around a 47-48 win team going to the season with – Jalen Brunson leading the charge, uh, Julius Randle being an All-NBA guy, and Mitch Robinson pulling down the boards and being a menace at center. Now, here's the thing. We have a plethora of young guys on this team. If Grimes takes a leap, if RJ takes a leap, if IQ takes a leap, if any of those young guys take a leap, then I can see that number rising from around 47 to 48 to around 50, 51, and now we're really talking. But it, it's up to the young guys to develop for us to take that leap. All right, there you go. You got it. 47 48. Think he could get up to 50. Knicks fans will like that. Continuity is good. Another, we'll see how they do in the playoffs. Another year of that happening could be a good thing. That is my guy, Jay Ellis, the host of the Nick of Time show. Go check that out. Also, check out the game show, trivia show that they're doing, Nick Tac Toe. Definitely a good one. Jay. Yeah, man. Man, it was good to have you here. We got to do this again. For sure, man. It's great talking to you, Dan. No, thank you. I'm glad you were able to pull up and do this. We'll definitely do this again. Absolutely. My guy, JLS. Let's go. All right, light episode this week. Special thanks to my guest, Jay Ellis, from the Nick of Time Show. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on the New York Post or SNY YouTube channels. It's time to get up out of here. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode for my editor, Catherine Cooper, producer, Brian Ruskowski, and director, Brianna Mutsin Dashiaka. I'm Dexter Henry. And thanks for watching New York Gut Game. Boom shakalaka.